tomorrow how parents and students in Guilford County feel about that. In Alamance County, many are taking advantage of this rare snowfall. A couple lends a helping hand to those who save lives. The snow, it's leaving us. Coming up next, the sun and the melting. But icy roads a problem for Friday. WFMI News 2 at 11 starts right now. I was kind of waiting for this all day. It's watching it out the window. We, I've been really waiting for it, you know. It's like this is my first time seeing snow in North Carolina. If you don't have to be out, you know, stay at home. You try to minimize travel. Highway Patrol troopers are ready. They're out on the roads to assist motorists and keep the traffic moving. It's so pretty. It's really, it's a really neat experience. North Carolina turned into a winter wonderland. Snow sweeping across much of our state from Murphy almost all the way to Manio. Many of us here saw two inches enough to play in, but also enough to cause some problems. Icy conditions will build in overnight as temperatures drop. The weather is to blame for at least one bad wreck. This is a photo of Highway 2427 near Bisco in Montgomery County. A car slid down an embankment and ended up in a creek upside down. Troopers say the driver is OK. As we speak, salt trucks are crisscrossing the triad, dropping salt on roads to keep ice from forming. Teams of plows gathered today prepared to clear roads if needed. Many school systems across the triad are choosing to delay classes tomorrow or just close altogether. Here is a look at just a few of them. Guilford County Schools closed tomorrow. So is Alamance Burlington and Winston Salem for Scythe County Schools. Davidson, Rockingham, Randolph counties also closed. Also a few delays to tell you about. Lexington City Schools delayed three hours as well as Surrey and Stokes County Schools. You can find the full list of closings and delays on WFMYNews2.com and on the bottom of your screen. Boy, you really couldn't escape the beautiful snow today. And who would want to when you see some of the incredible images like this one? Check out this photo from Adams Lake in Greensboro. A thin white coat blanketing the grass, bushes and trees looking a lot like powdered sugar. Over in Winston-Salem, the snow collecting on the high rises downtown. Steve sent us these pictures. He got the aerial view of the city as flakes filled up the sky. And check out this video from Burlington right outside the municipal building there. Big flakes coming down in slow motion right on top of bright yellow daffodils. We have crews all over the triad tonight. They have the latest on the road conditions and how people spent their snow day. First, we need to see what's next. Tim, the snow has passed. Now you're predicting a quick melt. Yeah, a quick melt, but first up comes the freeze. So overnight tonight, we are dipping down at below freezing. You know, we haven't really been below freezing yet, even throughout the whole snowstorm. We are around 40 degrees when it started and we have cooled to around 32 right now. You see how snow blanketed almost the entire state of North Carolina and it's still going down east over there closer to the coast. This is here just one little snow band left. I don't think there's much falling from that. We are basically done with any snowflakes at this time and you notice temperatures are still right around freezing. They're not below it. Not yet. And the good news is that a lot of the roads, believe it or not, are starting to dry up a little bit that could limit the amount of freezing that we have on those surfaces. We'll have to watch that into the morning hours. Nonetheless, temperatures, they are going to start to drop pretty quickly once we clear the skies over the next few hours. The snow is done. The clouds will clear. Once the clouds clear out, that's when the temperature will really start to drop. I'm expecting us right there in the mid and upper 20s for lows going into tomorrow morning. Same story goes for the foothill community. So solidly below freezing to start your Friday. Take it easy out there. I don't expect every road to be a skating rink. Far from that, but the bridges, the overpasses, the untreated surfaces. Yes, there could be some icy patches out there. Thankfully, the snow didn't really stick to the roads. That'll help a lot. And by the time we go to the afternoon, all this snow is gone. We're around 40 degrees. There's sunshine and just strong sunshine this time of year too. plan on a high of 40 degrees for your Friday. You can hold me to that coming up. We'll talk about your weekend. Our team of meteorologists is on top of the winter weather situation. Find out everything you need by looking at our website or app. Let's begin our team coverage in Greensboro tonight. Guilford County Schools is one of several districts that canceled classes tomorrow. WFMY News 2's Jess Winters has more on what parents are saying and current road conditions. The concern is the precipitation we got all day freezing overnight, and that's why Guilford County Schools canceled classes for tomorrow. The opinions on school closing is much like the weather, a wintry mix. 
they are having a great time. They have made a snowman and they attempted a snow fort. Just like the snow, kids are falling during an epic snowball battle. I've been actually like begging for it to snow, so I was really excited once I saw it coming down. It's the snowy scene playing out in front yards across Guilford County. Who won the snowball fight? Um, 100%. actually probably Matthew. How does it feel to be the snowball champion? Uh, pretty good. These fourth and sixth graders are pumped for a day without <laughs> classes. But snow days aren't all fun and games for parents who don't have a plan B. For me personally, I can work from home, so it's going to be fine. Um, but I do understand it could be a struggle for families that don't have that option. Mom Jennifer Jones says safety comes first and thinks Guilford County Schools made the right call. I mean, I absolutely understand that they have to think about the safety of the children with all the buses. So it's settled. Another day of snowman making, snowball fighting, and snow eating. It's perfect for snowball and also it tastes really good. Did you say it tastes good? Yeah, it tastes it, really good. Yeah, it actually does taste good. It's really like refreshing. In Guilford County, the snow seemed to be sticking to everything except for the roads, but DOT officials will be salting to the streets well into the night because again, the wetness freezing overnight, that is the concern. Jess, thank you. Early dismissals today allowed kids to get out and play in the snow, as you just saw. Many of them building snowmen. You got to check out some of these. We saw snowmen all across the triad popping up from Reedsville to Greensboro to Kernersville. Some very, very big, others very small. Everyone built their own versions. And if they didn't make snowmen, they made snow angels. Others just tried to get a taste of the falling flakes. Some even found hills to sled down, all enjoying the first decent snowfall in more than a year. We met people in Alamance County who rarely get to see snow, like for the third time ever. But first, we need to talk about the roads there as well. WFMY News 2's Alma McCarty joins us live. Alma, how are they looking? Well, the snowfall in Alamance County has all but stopped. You might see the occasional snowflake, and I do want to emphasize that word occasional because this is nothing like it looked earlier today. But take a look at the roads behind me. This is what we're seeing really across Alamance County. There's some moisture here and there, some slushy patches, but we did see many salt trucks traveling up and down these roads throughout the county. Well, as people continue to monitor these conditions tonight, others spent the afternoon focused on really spending time out in this much anticipated snowfall. Snow lovers wasted no time getting outside to enjoy it on the Elon University campus. I didn't think we were going to get snow this year, honestly. A snowball fight between friends quickly turned into a more collaborative effort. The snow was good for packing, so we made Buford. Oh, Buford? Oh, he's a. He's a great guy. Um, I really like his glasses. We got let out three hours early today, so that was nice. While some students rejoiced over canceled classes, others used the snow blanketing campus for an impromptu photo shoot. What I like about snow is when everywhere is white. This is really like amazing. Scholastica Kemi says this is only the third time in her life she's seen snow. The first time was a few years ago. I'm going to be posting it all over the social media, like on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and my family back home in Kenya. So how about classes at Elon tomorrow? Reps tell me that they're going to make that decision in the morning. Alma, thank you. Some of the conditions could turn dangerous overnight. Look at how much snow came down in Rockingham County. In the town of Madison, look at that. It looks more like a winter greeting card. The snow collecting on the side of the roads there too. This is Baker Crossroads in Wentworth. And speaking of preparation, y'all didn't skip on the bread and milk. Some viewers sent us these photos of the infamous essentials. Another essential might be a trusty vehicle to get to work in the morning. Some have one, others don't. The Greensboro couple is hoping to help. WFMY News 2's Marissa Tanzino is live now in Greensboro where she met two people who you might call snow angels. Well, Julie, Chad, the next uh, couple hours here are going to be crucial for the morning commute. We're here off of Wendover Avenue in Greensboro and the roads are damp and they could freeze, but one Greensboro couple is hoping to make the drive for some a little bit easier, specifically for those who help save lives. 
Being from Buffalo, New York, this is like a, a typical October. Sarah and Nick Torkowski can't really relate to the mild panic that ensues when a couple of inches of snow are on the way. We moved here three years ago, so every winter we get a lot of snow. It's inspired them to help out people in a profession close to their hearts. Her mm. mom's a nurse, my mom's a yeah. nurse. Um, it just, it's a family thing, you know, so. Sarah and Nick are offering rides to medical staff who might need help getting to work on the icy roads. People who can't make it to work tonight that work in the, you know, work in hospitals and stuff like that, the people who save our lives every day, um, the opportunity to get to work if need be. When Sarah posted the idea and a photo of their Jeep to Facebook, messages and comments of support started pouring in. We've gotten a few messages on Facebook, you know, a yeah. couple people have uh, <laughs> said, hey, thanks for your services. If you know, we don't really need it, but we appreciate you offering, so it's been nice. Having family in the business, they know that not going in is simply not an option. Th this is our way of passing it forward, and we're not, we really didn't expect all this, but, you know, we really just wanted to let you guys know thank you for helping our community and helping our, you know, people. Now, no one's taken them up on the offer just yet, but they're planning on keeping their phones on all night long in case someone does. Marissa, thank you. Besides people, plenty of pets got in on the action today, too. Here's a look at some of the photos that you sent us, and they are so adorable. Some dressed up their dogs in sweaters, others in socks. Many dogs look like they enjoy the snow, but there's a cat coming. A cat, that one, uh, <laughs> not looking so enthused. Many of you sent us pictures of your cats. All look like they prefer to stay indoors. And you've got to see this video of a shelter dog loving the snow. Smokey is staying at the Guilford County Animal Shelter while the one and a half year old is waiting for a forever home. He's certainly enjoying what is likely his very first snowfall. Winter weather lovers at the North Carolina Zoo in Asheboro are loving the snowy weather. The polar bears and Arctic foxes came out this afternoon. The snow likely reminding them of their homeland. And Christian, this is really just a taste of what our state saw as a whole today. Yeah, you know what? It was a nice snow day here in the triad, really all across North Carolina. I want to put this in motion for you as our storm really came across our area today. And you can just watch the evolution of all these storm reports popping up. Just over 250 storm reports across North Carolina today. And if the moisture makes it far enough to the east, the entire state could be covered in snow before the day is over. Let's check in with one of our weather spotters, Chris Burleson, up in Ruffin. That's in Rockingham County. Chris, how are things looking your way? We got about an inch and a half to two inches of snow here in Rockingham County. Um, the roads are kind of wet. They're not really slushy, but I do uh, plan on um, the roads being slick in the morning. So if you got to go out, please be careful. Yeah, so it kind of looks like a, a winter wonderland around your place, huh? Yes, sir. It sure is. <laughs> All right. And one thing that Chris mentioned, thanks, Chris, by the way. One thing he mentioned is that some of the roads are still wet. And as it gets below freezing tonight, icy spots in the morning will be our main concern. So Triad Snow Day coming to a close. Well, we've been asking you to text us your photos and videos of the snow today, and your responses have been incredible. Many of you giving us a news to a shout out in the process. <laughs> we love seeing that. We received thousands of messages today. So if you sent us one, but you haven't heard back yet, don't worry. Yeah, so many. We are getting your messages, and we thank you all for them. Our team is working to respond to every single one of them, and we want them to keep on coming. Well, we have more snow coverage ahead, plus a look at other big news today, including Fort Bragg soldiers coming home. Plus, meet the people behind the jeans you've got in your closet. We give you a rare look inside Contour Brands, a global company headquartered in Greensboro. That's next.
happening. Police have not named any suspects yet. 800 Fort Bragg paratroopers are back home tonight after serving in the Middle East. The 82nd Airborne Division shared these photos today. These are some of the men and women who deployed overseas on New Year's Eve. More than 3,000 deployed that day as tensions flared with Iran. You'll remember it was after an American strike it killed Iran's top military commander. About 2,000 troops are still stationed in the Middle East. It's not clear when they'll return. You know these iconic brands, Wrangler and Lee, but their parent company might not be a household name just yet. The perfect fit is the inspiration of the name Contour, and they say they are the perfect fit for the triad. Turn a little bit more towards me. Constant motion on the Contour campus. That's a good one. It may be winter, but they're months ahead. This photo shoot features fashions that will debut in the summer. Perfect. At the Design Center, they're preparing for next year. We just finished spring 21, so we are about to start fall 21. The staple of Lee and Wrangler designers? Our core product is a five pocket jean. But they're creations that come in all sizes go far beyond that. We also make jackets, shirts, t-shirts, graphics, um, non-denim bottoms. And they'll be shipped across the globe. You can find Wrangler in Belgium, you can find Wrangler in France, Germany, Poland, South America, everywhere. You'll also find Contour employees worldwide. It employs 15,000 people. It has headquarters in Belgium and China. Its global headquarters, though, is in Greensboro, also known as Jeansboro. I mean, this was a denim town, and so the fact that you know we're here and thriving in this uh, community and, and making sure that we're keeping denim well alive in, in Greensboro is, uh, is really pretty fun. Contour was formed when VF moved its headquarters and 85 executive jobs from Greensboro to Colorado. Wrangler and Lee spun off and Contour was created. It was shocking for all of us when it came out. Contour replaced those VF jobs and then some, hiring 200 workers in the triad, including Lee's executive vice president and global brand president, Chris Waldeck. I can tell you the city has been absolutely fantastic. The people of Greensboro have really embraced uh, all the employees that moved over. Contour is less than a year old and has already grown. It opened a retail store in downtown Greensboro. The collar is up a little bit. Their new photo studio is used to showcase their clothing online. The company also expanded to Revolution Mill, a former textile mill. Walking in the door every morning is inspiring to me. Being down here in Greensboro is the most creative environment I've ever been in. In all, about 1,500 people work for Contour in the triad. 800 at World Headquarters in downtown Greensboro, 150 at Revolution Mill, 200 at a service support center on South Elm Eugene Street, and 350 workers at a distribution center in Moxville. And we're bringing a lot of talent in. They get here, they don't want to leave. The parent company may be new, but their brands are steeped in history. Lee is 130 years old, Wrangler over 70. You recognize their fashions and who wore them. James Dean wore Lee jeans in Rebel Without a Cause. Bob Denver wore Wranglers on Gilligan's Island. They are brands with a rich past stitched in time and a company committed to the future. This is a natural place for us to be. We're proud to be here. Uh, we're here to stay and, uh, and, and to, to build a great corporation together with the city. Contour also owns Rock and Republic. The company is tight-lipped about any future plans, but I can tell you they're celebrating their first anniversary in May. All right, the snow is gone. Say goodbye. It'll be back at some point. Who's to say? You know, we could still maybe see some more later on this year. I wouldn't rule it out. We still have about four weeks to go in what is typically considered snow season here historically through about the middle part of March is when you can usually maybe see something. Don't see anything on the horizon right now, but who knows? We have time. Low pressure was centered right off the coast of North Carolina, and if you're kind of in tune with the weather, you know what situations typically bring us some snow. This is one of those. When you have a coastal low developing right off here, not too far from Wilmington, we can kind of wrap in the cold air up here, and we're still close by enough to get some of that plentiful moisture. Part of it from the Gulf, part of it from the Atlantic, and it worked out today to at least get a brief amount of it. Now, if we had more cold air, 
and we weren't above freezing throughout the day, we would have had a much more significant snow event, maybe closer to six or seven inches. Instead, it's about two and none on the roads. This is also an odd scene that maybe you have in your yard as well. Daffodils covered in some snow, a nice juxtaposition of spring and winter. And of course, at Wake Forest, the campus and the quad looking incredibly festive today. Let's talk a little bit about the numbers that we've seen so far today. Ironic to see Montgomery County at the top here. Troy almost closing in on three inches this afternoon and PTI ending this very, very long snowless streak in fashion right around two inches there. Burlington, Summerfield, Gibbsville at two inches as well. Close to that in Ashboro, a lot of two inches on the board. We had several one inch totals on the board as well. Not many threes and fours. We got kind of robbed of the moisture on the front end of the system. I think we would have had a little bit more had that dry air not squashed us initially. Be advised there could be some icy patches on the roads, but I am encouraged that a lot of the roads seem to actually be drying up pretty quickly. There's just a little bit of a breeze now that seems to evaporate some of that water on the roadways. That's good news. So hopefully we can limit the icy patches tomorrow morning. Either way, by midday, you're fine to go wherever you'd like. I think upper 30s to right around 40 and with sunshine that really works a lot of magic out there tomorrow. Don't worry about it. We'll be OK. Mid teens is what it feels like, though. This is your wind chill tomorrow and it still feels like the mid 30s during the afternoon. Here's the setup high pressure building in. It's all sun all the time for tomorrow and all sun all the time for for the upcoming weekend as well. We get a little bit warmer day by day. I'm expecting some low 50s come Saturday and actually mid 50s by Sunday. So the weekend itself looking very, very nice, I would say. And it's a dry weekend for a change, so we get that to enjoy also. Of course, the rain can't stay too far away for too long. We'll have it coming back on Monday with a good chance of showers there and staying a little unsettled, you could say, by Tuesday into Wednesday of next week. We'll watch for some shower chances there as we keep the temperatures right about average. That's your forecast. We're coming right back after this. I could not. Duke could not make a shower.
marked the first time a top 10 Blue Devils team lost to an unranked squad by at least 20 points since 1979. And as you'd expect, Coach K, not too thrilled. And he had a very interesting analogy after the game that included this, an Xbox controller. I kid you not. It'll make a little more sense when you hear it from the man himself. Maybe. You know, this isn't an Xbox game. This is a human being game. Human does that Xbox thing it doesn't have human nature in it and all that. That's why a lot of people play it. This game is about human nature and human beings. And sometimes when you eat too much, you're not as hungry. When you need something, you're really hungry. And when those two meet, a lot of times the team that needs it the most kicks the other team's butt. Well, that's, uh, that's one way to put it. Duke will look to get back on track uh, at home against Virginia Tech this weekend. And speaking of the Blue Devils, former Duke star Kyrie Irving is hurt again. Irving will now miss the rest of the season as he will undergo arthroscopic shoulder